So I've had so many amazing teachers in my life, so many mentors, and it's really hard to narrow down to just one. But I, I think as it relates to photography and art, there is one that stands out above all the rest. And it was my very first photography teacher. I didn't start taking pictures until I was 18 or 19 years old. I hadn't discovered the camera, but I thought I'd read a short passage about Andrew Phelps from my book, The Color of Everything, because I think it, it, it articulates so beautifully what he was and these, these few lessons that he taught me. It says, <clears throat> Andrew is a fine art photographer whose images are complex and simple at the same time, mysterious because they seem to be at battle with themselves. They reflect a deep understanding of photographic principle and theory, which I know nothing about. For me, photography is literal and impulsive, like I'm trying to catch moments falling past me, but his are deliberate, crafted and made, not taken. They're responses to the world, not reactions to it. I show him my binder of pictures that jump and have no order or consistent style. I'm all eyes and no voice, and the images seem as scattered as my brain. One of the first things he tells me is that sometimes the best way to find a voice is to shut up, suggesting that I let the world talk for a moment instead of thrusting myself upon it. He's teaching me not to rely on the fantastic, but rather to develop the skill of seeing magic in the mundane, because that is where most of life happens. Photography is alchemy, he says. It's not simply pressing a button, but choosing where to point the camera with studied anticipation. It's the serendipity of moment and light, and there are no mistakes, just lessons. Andrew was so incredible because he had a way of articulating what I needed to learn in, in a way that was digestible. He knew so much more than me. He had probably forgotten more about photography than I could ever learn. And yet he was capable of making it something that I could understand. And the greatest teachers take very complex things. Like, for example, riding a bike. Riding a bike is very complex. But if somebody tries to teach you about the physics and the dynamics of that, um, it's not going to stick. What they teach you how to do is 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 kind of boil it down into something that's understandable that you can replicate. And so Andrew, Andrew changed the direction of my life because he encouraged me. He said, look, I think you have the skills to make this work. I think you have the skills to make this a lifelong thing if you want to pursue it. And he also told me, you're, not, you're probably not going to get rich off this, but it can take you to some beautiful places. It's a vehicle to see. It's a vehicle to expand. It's a vehicle to understand. It's a conduit through which you can connect to the world and you can connect other people to the world. And for me, my purpose is that it's connecting people. It's bringing people into something that's unfamiliar and showing them in some ways how we're all the same and how we're all tied together in this big, beautiful experience. But the other thing that Andrew was so instrumental at teaching me was that there is one greatest teacher that we all have in our lives. And it's not somebody else, it's ourselves. And that doesn't mean that it, we're, we're celebrating ourselves. It means that we, in all of our complexity, are our greatest teachers. We always will be. And that can come through teaching other people. I've learned so much through teaching other people and being forced to boil it down, articulate things simply so people can understand. But the other thing that was so instrumental about that is that we're our greatest teachers because we're full of mistakes. And mistakes are always an invitation to learn. So we're constantly interpreting the world, interpreting our actions and correcting or moving through the world as it relates to the mistakes we've made. And the last thing, the last thing that he taught me, he said this as he was dropping me off at the train station in Salzburg, Austria. This is where I learned from him. He said, Corey, it's so important that you remember one thing. And I was, you know, I was like, what? I was 20 years old. And he said, what you do can never be who you are. And what he meant by that is don't confuse doing with being. Don't confuse an action with your identity because it can't be that. Nothing we, can, nothing we do can actually be who we are. Who we are is so much more elemental, so much deeper. And that 
in essence, that's always our greatest teacher. 